main referee for today's game is Marlon Perus. The Northern Explorers, they would have faced the, this is a Group C action if you don't know, and they would have faced the Maloney Mavericks, and they would have been defeated 4-0, a crushing defeat. I don't think that game would was a true reflection of the Northern Explorers' ability, but it was 4-0 nevertheless. To get four past you, that's, that's a bit much, but... Vegans, hopefully, they now they can bounce back and get some points to the board against the Port of Spain Capitals. Port of Spain Capitals, this is their first game in the Group C. And we are seeing the starting lineup for the Northern Explorers. Um, I must pay mention to Jason Monroe, I think. He and Elijah Graves and they would be the reason why. If they are to get something against this Port of Spain Capital side, they would be a uh, Port of Spain Capital. Now we see their starting lineup. I mean, we all know Kendall, Jack Dio Singh, very, has a delicate touch, magisterial on the ball. The head coach for both. Teams head coach for Northern Explorers is Josiah Lamb, and that's the beginning with Peru's Monroe blowing the start of the first half. The Northern Explorers being four goals to nil in the last game, they would want to bounce it around, they would want to feel it a bit, and now they're on the advancement here and they plays it now. To the number 13, Elijah. Elijah now he plays it back inside. And the right back tries to swing it there. Kurt, Kurt Maloney. But his cross was to no avail. And now the Port of Spain Capitals, they have a bit of it. They, they are going to want to keep it too. Being in the first couple of minutes of this exciting encounter, Group C. But that's a wonderful interception now. And he tried to swing it across, but the overlapping round for the left back, he swings it in, but good interception there. And the referee spotted an infringement. But promises and signs here for the Northern Explorers. They have had the ball deep in the opposition's half. Not necessarily penetrating it, but bouncing it around. And keeping it there with the high press as well. And that's Johnny. He's a bit skillful and he plays it now. To Markel. Markel back to Johnny. And he switches the play. What wonderful interception there by the left back. And Thomas. He plays it now forward. And I think that was too much tugging and pulling there. By the number 11. Makaya. Too much for the referee's liking. And the ball distributed now on the right flank to the number four, Kurt Maloney. Oh, that was a beautiful, a poor control there. That's a wonderful lofted pass. And he does a step over. He still has it here. Micah. And is he going to have a shot? He does let go the throttle, but just too weak there by Johnny. Norega. 
Noriega has got on it a lot in this first half, this first opening minutes. Has bounced it around well. But you know the next floor is on it now. And this looks like Isaiah. Isaiah is he is he built unmanfully or unlawfully handled there and he was. I think this is a very good position to have a shot at goal here. And in number 14, Marcus Ambrose looks like he wants it. He's stepping over. He looks like he's the free kick specialist for the Northern Explorers. I think he's the one should go on to goal. And it's, oh. It was eventually cracked by Ronda Lostin. But that was way too high for any danger on the for the Spain Capitals goal. And see John with a wonderful distribution on the right flank. And this number 11, Micah, has been on it a lot. He has beautiful hold-up play. Beautiful skill by Micah again. Plays it on the inside and Micah gets it back. Is he going to swoo? Just a bit on too much, too pacey for him to catch. And unfortunately, that went out for... And another next row is true in. Very dangerous play there by the center back. And now, Simon, wow, that's a beautiful play. Is the referee going to call? He actually signals a true in. If I'm not mistaken. A fall there, I think, on Anderson. Yeah, he does actually signal the fall for Anderson. And Marcus Sambro's on it now. A lot of tall figures in the box. I think he should sing a D. And he swings it on top of the D. Is he going to crack here? He doesn't. Is there a handball involved? And the referee did spot the handball. And gives a free kick now again to the Northern Explorers. I think they need to work their free kicks a little bit better, the Northern Explorers, if they want to get anything out of this. We had an effort earlier by Rondell Austin that wasn't too handsome and very high. But Austin again on it now. And this time he goes low, tries to go underneath the wall, doesn't work out. And now we finally have a touch here now by Kendall. Uh, I was a little bit heavy on... Micah really been tugged and pulled a lot in these opening 10 minutes. But good distribution. And now Isaiah has time and space. Tries to play it long and he slips at the last moment there.
Carl Ferrer on it now, the goalkeeper. Plays it to the number 13. He lie up, but he lost out on it. And Jack Deo saying, is he going to crack? He doesn't. He plays it to Micah. I think he should have. Well, that's a foul. It has to be a foul. Just a little nudge in the back. I'm glad the referee pointed that one out. And Isaiah, he distributes it now to the number three, Anderson. Isaiah still on it. Tries to get it back to his teammate, but to no avail. I must admit that the, the ball has been bouncing around on both sides. Changing from possession, possession to the both sides a lot. I don't think anybody really want to keep it. Bagjadeo singing on it now. He plays it to Micah. Micah a bit lackadaisical with the pass. Should have done a little bit better, put a little bit more effort into it so that his teammate could get it. But like I was saying in the first 10 minutes, not ball has been shifting from side to side, ping-ponging around a lot. I think with time, we'll see it settle a bit. But it looks as though the Port of Spain Capitals, they want to show that they can keep it. And they're bouncing it around a little bit nice now to the rhythm section. And Mike on it now for the, on the left flank. He's been hassled back. And Jack Deo coming in deep to get some sort of feel of it. He's a very skillful playmaker. And that's how his distribution skills is. And now it's number 13 running in. Michael. Is he going to take on his lad? Michael plays it back to the number nine. Thomas. Thomas on it now. This should be set to Jack Dale. Very skillful playmaker. Now Thomas on it now. Looking for some sort of support, some sort of run. Or not successful in. And Mike on it, is he going to have a shot? He's going to, he's one-on-one -on -one with the player. Oh, just slipped at the last moment. That was very promising there for Mike. If he could have kept his footing. I don't know if he's feeling something there, Mike. Doesn't look too well. Tries to play it in Micah, he should have controlled that a bit better. Has been getting into some really good positions, Micah. Just the final touch. Isn't very strong as A game. Now Michael Campbell on it now. Plays it all the way back to Anthony Stokes. Stokes try to distribute to the right flank. But nobody was on the same wavelength there. And the ball goes all the way back to Kyle Ferreira, the goalkeeper for the Northern Explorers. And he basically pushes his team forward. I think he's going to go long. Eventually he holds it. And he dunks it deep down into the Port of Spain Capitals half. And Johnny Noriga has been on it a lot in this first half. Plays it down. To 
Mr. Young. Micah. Micah now to Kareem Joseph. Back to the central back. And that goes all the way to Anthony Stokes. Stokes goes forward to Johnny Norodega. And this is really good stuff here from the Port of Spain Capitals. Bouncing it around. Meaning some sort of offensive business here. Oh, that's a foul. Just niggle the back. On Jack Dale. Michael now. His whole up plays brilliant. Plays a beautiful ball to Michael. But wonderful last this challenge there from his opposite number. And immediately they punks on it. And that's a that's offside actually. By on Michael. I think it's just a syndrome of the first game how much action there was in it and the different action in this game makes you feel as though the teams isn't playing very well but they are they're playing these two teams unlike the first game it's more of a chess match everybody don't want to show off all their moves just yet Now the, there's a lot of time and space. For Young. Seal Young on it now. And Jack Deo. Plays it back to the right back. He drives forward with no one tackling here. Stokes. Stokes on, right back on it and now. The number 17, Johnny Noget Norega has been on it plenty. And Jack Dale spreads it now to the right flank. And there's a lot of time and space to swing it. Oh, he should have swinged it in. There was a lot of bodies in the box. But he has it back now. He has another bite of the cherry. And Micah on the inside. Wonderful fake there to give him time and space, but eventually he lost out on it. And that's brilliant play now. Josiah. On it, he goes on the next side. He plays it now to Kurt. Kurt looks up. Kurt plays it to Elijah. He tries to take on his. Now Elijah tries to get it back, but he lost out on it. And he plays it now to Cecile Young. Cecile Young plays it all the way back to Anthony Stokes. And Stokes distributed well to the right flank. Now Mike on it now. Wonderful Tiki Taka, but good sliding challenge to get back at it. By Anderson Gibson. Actually, his, his effort uh, was, was able to give the Northern Explorers the ball here. And that's not where you want to lose it. And it's four versus two. And is he going to spank it here? Norega eventually has a shot. Micah. And he looks at the turf. I don't know what he's looking at. Is it his, is it his foot? The turf he's looking at to complain. But this is, this is flat ground. There's nothing to blame there. Just was a poor effort there by Micah. Should have done better. That's dangerous stuff. And now, number 13 for Elijah. He has, well, he tries to play it in. But that's very intelligent. There by Anthony. Allowed it to run straight back to the goalkeeper. And now, Elijah on it now. Now he has time and space here. 
Isaiah Samuel, he has a shot. But that went to no one. And now Kurt Maloney plays it to Jack Deo. Jack Deo looks up. Is he gonna go long? Yes, he eventually goes on the inside. But his pass wasn't directed properly. And he plays it quick. Jack Deo now, he, he, if he looks up and turn, he would have, oh, should have turned there. But Micah, he plays it all the way now on the right side. Tries to play it on the inside, but the pass was red, I must say. A lot of the passes are being read by the opposing sides. That's signs of um, the sides canceling out each other here. And you're gonna you're gonna require something very special to break down this cancellation, constant cancellation. Oh, that's beautiful. I think he's on side. No, he's not. Now, Thomas is on it. Plays it now. Jack Dale holding it up really well. Jack Dale showing his brute strength. Pass a bit dangerous, but they was able to keep it. And now Norega, he has been on it plenty in the first half. Cancelled out again, and now Isaiah. He I think Isaiah, he was about to play it to his teammate, but he saw that he was offside, and that was very intelligent of him. Especially aware of where his teammates are and who he can pass it to and who he can't. And we have an injury here. close to the right hand side of the or the right flank we have number 13 on the floor this is not something we want to see that is Elijah gave Sandy I mean the two teams going to use this as a as a a chance to recuperate but that's not a time that's not that's not a sight you'd want to see you have been playing well thus far Elijah Elijah, hopefully he can recover. But the head coach, Joshua Lamb, for the Northern Explorers, and Ronald Primus for the Portisman Capitals, they're going to use this little injury break to recuperate. I must say it has been a tactical masterclass defensively by the both sides. They've been cancelling it out each other. And no side really getting a clear chance on, on goal thus far. It's just 22 minutes to play, so I don't know if they can keep up this for 90 minutes. But in glaring contrast to the first game, the two teams don't want to show each other. They're playing a little poker face, the two teams. They don't want to show each other their hands just yet. I think we might see a replacement for Elijah, unfortunately. I think that's the end I'm getting intel. That Jalon Brooks might replace him. But is he going to spank you? Yeah. Ooh, that was very clean, actually. From the idiot, Ronald Austin. Just a bit on the high side.
from your back. Charlon Brooks actually did keep, come on for Elijah, an early injury. And it's a wonderful sight to see that the Northern Explorers that could bounce it out of their half. I think Noriga wanted to make the forward run and he dropped back and just not on the same page there. Teammates. But yeah, I must say this half, not only to the cancellation of the two sides, but the two the sides themselves just not getting the final, the quality of the final passes is just not right up there. But that's not where to lose it on Mike on it now. He gives it a jog. Jack Dale, back to Micah. Lost his foot in a bit. But he has a chance. Is he going to scoop it into the box? He plays it to Norega. Norega with some quick feet on top of the box. Everyone just in front of him to block the shot. Black to Jack Dale now. Is he going to turn? He plays it into the number eight. Just on the long side. He's going to keep it in. Yes, he does. Alex. And this is another stoppage in the play. We have another player down. Hopefully it's not a, another early exit for one of the Port of Spain Capitals players. I can't quite make out who the player is but again in the first 20 26 minutes 27 minutes and we have another player that potentially might be replaced and we really don't like to see things like this happening to players early I think that could be a test to players coming out after being locked up for about two years in COVID Just doesn't look good, I must say. I don't think he can continue. By the just by the looks of how he's walking. And a substitution, hence is eminent. Casey David coming on for him, Jesse Alexis coming off. And there's a lot of time and space for the right back and he has been distributed well and he has actually got it. Anderson Gibson tries to swing it in but wonderful defending by the Port of Spain Capitals. And Kareem Joseph trying to get out, plays it back to the right, to the left back. And look at the quick feet ability. Last just challenge it. And clearance. And now Jack Day on it now. He holds it up well with his strength. But his distribution isn't very well. Luckily his side still has it. Jack Day again. Just not... Um, Getting his foot in in the first couple of minutes here.
And now there's a counter attack for I think the two teams should, should try and get the ball on the ground and knock it about a bit. They're trying to go long too quickly and the opposing team is bouncing. But now we have Jason Monroe. He has time and space and he's actually very skillful. Tries to play it across. But wonderful clearance by the number five that just came on. Malik. But now it's a corner kick to Northern Explorers and let's see what they can do. He swings it deep into the opposition's box. But I think Micah eventually got a header back out there. And it's another corner for the Northern Explorers. Header out there by Michael. And well negotiated there for uh, for the Spain Capitals. Goal kick. And he goes forward here. Yeah, I think I think he needs to pass it a bit more. Referee gave him a bit of partition there, but I uh, didn't see much wrong. Anderson Gibson showing his close foot ability. Driving with the ball into the opposition's half. Ronald Austin, the free kick specialist over right here for the Northern Explorers. I think he's going to clip it into the box. Yes, he does clip it. Oh, that looks very dangerous. But eventually cleared by the Port of Spain Capitals. And Jason Monroe on it now. Just run out with it there. I must mention to the setup for the Northern Explorers defensively. They're really high pressing. They are compact in the midfield. And this is a ooh, good, good last this challenge. And now is he going to let go the throttle? He has a shot. But beautiful defending there. That was a wonderful spank by Josiah Thomas. But the defender equally match it with a block. And not an explorers with a cross here over the corner. Let's see what's gonna happen. Referee signals. And it's a beautiful corner. Jason Monroe, the keeper, and all came out. Silly on John. I think he touched. No, he didn't touch it. Referee signal a goal kick. Corner was a just bit, just a bit too deep. Eventually missing out on everyone. And I'm seeing over lap and run. Jack Deo, he's very skillful on it. But wonderful defending there and from the number 12. And now they're on the counter attack. A 
Referee signals another corner kick. Tried to play a long ball in the box and the defenders dealt with it. But I think that's that's why we don't have much quality in the final third. It's almost a kick and hope for both sides. I think they could bounce it around a bit more in the opposition's half. Ball all the way now on the left flank for the Northern Explorers. And he has an overlapping run. Wow, he's offside actually. Now Cillian John on it now. He plays it now to the number 16. Cillia, Cecil Young. He plays it long to Jack Deo. Jack Deo shows his, his speed and Jack Deo. The referee doesn't call. Is he going to cut inside? Is that a penalty? That has to be. Surprise, surprise to everyone here in the Marvin Lee. I'm not sure why Monroe Peru's Referee didn't call that one. It looked clear to me that there was an infringement. I don't know if sometimes referees, if you ask him if it was outside of the box, he would have blown any day, but sometimes in the box causes problems. But Jack Deo back on it now. He swings it in one time, tries to get it to Micah, but he didn't wrap his foot around it well enough. And it was just in between the goalkeeper, Kyle Ferreira and Micah, the striker for Port of Spain Capitals. But back to the, the potential penalty. I don't know if the referee, Maron Perus, was on his P's and Q's with that call. And that was much to the frustration of the Port of Spain Capitals. But the game is still in the balance, still nil nil. Like that, that's an example. An easy call there in the middle of the pitch. But I think sometimes referees, they need to have a, they need to see a, a bit more of a, Rash challenge in the box to award it. They won't give it very easily. You tend to see that in football. And the referee spotted an infringement on Apple White. I think the referee might dish out a card as his hand on his pocket. <laughs> he eventually doesn't. Doesn't like Jack Dale so close to it. And it's all the way back now to Ferreira. The goalkeeper for the Northern Explorers. But that distribution isn't very well and this looks very dangerous now. And it's to Norega. And he he slots it in really well. I'm going to be honest with you, I think the Port of Spain Capitals deserve this goal. And Orega with a right foot strike. That was too far for Ferreira to hold on to, but that was wonderful by Jack Deo for spotting the stop and look at that shot on the right side left side of the keeper wonderful shot one a goal goal, goal. one nil for the port of spain capitals and again the northern explorers they are done one they won't want to be in this position because this means that they will need to be on top
And that foot first touch wasn't too well. And the goalkeeper cleared it now. That's actually a beautiful clearance. Straight to for the Spain Capital player. Mike on it now, he plays it forward. And now Noriga, he flicks it in. He has Jack Dale in support, he gives it to Jack Dale. He has a Mike Michael running forward and pulling away the defender, Jason Monroe. And I think this now is looking a little bit tiki tackery for Ting, and he slips in. What a goal that is! That's a beautiful team goal here for the Port of Spain Capitals. They're bouncing it around, bouncing it around. Everyone on the same page. Everyone knowing where the next pass is to come. And Anthony Applewhite, the number six. What a goal that is. Look at how the team effort was. Everyone knew what they was doing. And look at that close control there by Applewhite. Slotted it in the bottom left corner and it's 2 0 down now for the Northern Explorers. And I must mention that when the Northern Explorers was playing the Maloney Mavericks last week, they got one, two, three goals. Bam shot, bam shot, right after one after the other. And it's something similar here. That was a good flick in by Michael, but well one well read by the defender Kurt. And Monroe on it now. Charlon lost out on it to Young. Young to Noriga. Noriga to Micah. Micah now all the way to the right. And he plays it now back to Micah. He by himself here, Micah. He still has it. Eventually pulls it back to Jack Dale, Jack Dale switches it to the right flank with a wonderful distribution and he caps this lad. <laughs> that was too, a, a bit too snappy, a little bit too snapbackish for him to take that and he committed the foul. And we have the Port of Spain Capitals in a very promising position to extend their league. Right on the right hand side of the box. On the right flank. And he actually has a wonderful shot, but wonderful punch by Ferreira. And there's a lot of time and space for him to swing it in the box. He pulls it back for Kareem Joseph. Actually, Norega, is he going to slot it again? I liked how he set up for that one. He looked like he was very poised for a shot. And he clips it in the box. But wonderful head out there by Anderson Gibson. And he heads it out for a uh, Port of Spain Capitals corner kick. Actually, it's a true in my pardons. Thought it meant out for a corner. And now Joseph's on it now. But the referee spotted an unlawful challenge. And Northern Explorers has a chance to go forward. But I must mention, the Northern Explorers, the, the, in the first half, even though it's 2-0, it's really been very close between the two sides. But there was just a, a major drop in concentration in the Explorers. And that's why they're 2-0 down. But they have a chance here now. He should have played it. Does eventually play it. I think he took too long there. 
the number 17, Apple White. And Jack Dale with his skill again, and I've said must mention this play. And he played to Michael. Is he going to cut back? He actually goes line. Still has it here, Michael. Oh, wonderful skill by Michael, and he eventually gets the foul. He's been being talked back, being talked back, being talked back, being talked back. And the referee eventually gave him some partition here, Michael, for his efforts. We have about two minutes extra time. It's 45 minutes. I think this will be the last action for the first half. And could the Portisman Capitals have a knockout blow for the Northern Explorers? Very good position here. And he plays it short to Michael. Is he going to swing it in now? He clips it in. Well, I think it was too wide now. Michael on it now. Oh, that's another good challenge, but he still has it, Michael. Eventually swings it in, but no one. Oh. oh, oh, good challenge there. I think he should have let go the throttle. Should have had a shot there. And the Port Spin Capitals now on the right flank, bringing danger to the Northern Explorers. But I lost this challenge. But like I mentioned, this first half. It really was tight between the two sides. It's just a lapse in concentration on two occasions for the Northern Explorers. And that awards the for the Spain Capitals 2-0 up. It's about five, six minutes extra time, right? I think that was be awarded because of the two injury concerns in the first half. And that's the blast for the first half. Not an Explorers 2 nil and the Port of Spain Capitals 2. We have two wonderful goals. One by Norega, and the next one by Anthony Applewhite. Norega, number 17. Anthony Applewhite, number 6. In the 41st minute. This is Group C clash between the Northern Explorers and Port of Spain Capitals. And I don't think you should go anywhere. I don't think you should go anywhere because... We're going to be in for the second half very soon. This is the J Super Cup. And we'll be right back after the short commercial break. My name is Darrell Williams, Communications Officer on behalf of Gateway Athletics International. We cordially invite you to our 2022 launch and play a draft for our highly anticipated GA Super Cup 2022. As one of the two female commissioners in a traditionally male-dominated and administered sport, I would like to spend a few moments looking at two very small and simple words. Those words our hopes and dreams. This Super Cup will act as a conduit for national recruitment. 
through this process, we will incorporate the development and advancement of football through great gateways programs as our players and teams build from inward out to become the very best. Coming into the league, I'm really excited and looking forward to playing with not only my fellow teammates, but also the past players and veterans. Being a past member of the TT Pro League, this is a good opportunity for younger players coming into this GA Super Cup, you know, to market themselves and push towards being called on, on the national team and, and being given opportunities to even go outside of Trinidad and Tobago to further their, their profession.
And we are back here live for the second half for the GA Super Cup Group C action. The Northern Explorers versus the Port of Spain Capitals. The Port of Spain Capitals getting two past the Northern Explorers thanks to Anthony Applewhite and Norega. Number 17 and number 6 respectively. Or 6 and 17 I should say. And I want, I see the introduction of the number 10 for the Northern Explorers. Jamal Lashing playing right on top. Striking position and let's see what he can do. But the Northern Explorers immediately in the second half trying to make some sort of change on the score line here in the Marvin Lee. It's all the way now to the now. Ah, wonderful high press. And I'm hearing a high press from the Northern Explorers. He's asking a lot more from these players. And is this going to be some Joshua Ashing? I mean, just Jason Monroe. And eventually having a shot there. But I think he leaned back too much. And the ball was way over the bar. But promising signs in the first one minute or two for Northern Explorers. I think the coach, um, Joshua Lamb, realizes that something has to be done so that he, his team could at least get one back and put some pressure on Port of Spain Capitals. And he has a shot now. That's a good shot there by Anderson Gibson. But it was down the nozzle of Celine John and the wonderful distribution by Celine John to Marvel. Axing for handball there to Norvell. And number three now Anderson Gibson on it now. He actually lost out it to Jack Dale and Jack Dale with his strength he holds it up nice and plays it back to his side. Could get a feel of it in the second half so far. Wonderful flick pass there. Eventually scuffed out by the defenders. I was a bit wayward there. Uh, and the Port of Spain Capitals back on it. And they're going to get a feel of it for the second half now. Oh, beautiful skill there by the number nine. Thomas, Noriga asking for it and he gets it, Noriga, the goal scorer, has been really playing well this, and there's a, a wonderful loft pass to Micah, but Kyle Ferrer read it, Jamal Ashing, ball is played to him, oh, beautiful uh, skill again there by Thomas, with a step over. A wonderful lofted plaster, Michael. Is he gonna go down the line? He's skillful, the youngster. And Orega asking for the foul and he rightfully gets it. Just twirling the player rounds in circles there smartly, Norega. Plays on the inside now. Noriga on it again, and yeah, he's been clipped again by his opposite number. Apple White, avid Apple White, that is. But let's see what Jack Deo could conjure up for his side. He's very, he's a very talented player. Jack Deo hasn't done much wrong in this game. And he clips it again now for Thomas. Thomas swings it in with his right foot. One time cross and it's very dangerous. Is anybody going to let it go? No one gets the chance to. And this is beautiful tiki-taka here from Port of Spain Capitals. A referee and all has to 
Sam Burton, Thomas now on the right flank. Is he going to swing it in? He plays it back. But Ma Michael lost his foot in there, unfortunately. And Ashing, Thomas. Oh, that's not a good pass, Ashing. You would be disappointed. And now Jack they on it now. He has been really he has been dropping back ever so often to play make for his side and it's very intelligent from him. Now Noriga. Is he gonna have a shot? Let go to throttle Noriga. Just wide. His first goal was outside the box, so he we all know his his ability. And Jason Monroe tried to get it there, but Jack Dale plays it now to Michael. And Michael has a lot of time and space. Is he going to swing it one time? I think he should. He eventually drills it across the box. But it's beautifully intercepted. But Michael again has it back again, and he has Jack Dale in support. Jack Dale has really control how this game has flowed over time. And the Kyle Ferreira immediately kicked it out there. Kyle, the goalkeeper, tried to go deep. And wonderful playing there by Ashing. Ashing now, oh, he hasn't got on his footing just yet in the second half. Hasn't put in that extra pace for his side. Defensively, I think his players should help him out. Jack Day over there, <laughs> showing his skill, the referee says play on, but... Very skillful here, now Norig on it now. Back to Norig. And they have no issues keeping it, they are 2-0 up. Wonderful ball here. Is he gonna is something classy gonna happen? He still has it here the number nine. The referee didn't see anything wrong on Thomas. And eventually Isaiah gets the foul. And he tries to play it one time to Ashing. I think he's gonna negotiate his way out here. Yes he does and he Gets a throw for his side, the Port of Spain Capitals. And Oregon got it now in the center of the of their half. And he distributes it to Young, the left back. Now it's back to Noriga. Noriga to Jack Leo. These two have really been the difference in the midfield and evidently the score line. Lofted pass, but Isaiah intercepted. And he plays a beautiful ball to Jason Monroe. Is he going to catch it? Nah, the speed of Anthony Stokes is too much to handle. And he and all distributes it well so that a counter attacking play could happen. And wonderful skill there. And this looks very dangerous. Micah, he just has one to take on. And he keeps it and he tries to get He does get the foul. Smartly getting himself between the man and the ball there. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's Jack Dale.
But we have a free kick for the Port of Spain Capitals in a very dangerous position. Are they going to spank it or are they going to try to clip it over the box, the wall? Try to set it over the wall. Oh, and that's a beautiful free kick. I mean, it's hard to keep us rooted to the spot in shock. But he doesn't care. I don't know if it ricocheted off the wall. But Norega again, the number 17, with a wonderful free kick. And this is really disappointing here for the Northern Explorers. They made some tactical changes, but they've been making a bit too much fouls in and around the box, their box, that is. And the Port of Spain Capitals punks on them. So we have the Maloney Mavericks scoring. Johnny Noriga with a brace thus far. He's been really showing that he's the one to muscle this game in the midfield. As well as on the score line with a beautiful free kick. Now it's Micah on it now. Back to Micah. He plays it now on the left flank. We have seen overlap and run by Young, but he doesn't go that way. He went back, Micah. And... Uh, this is not a good sign. We've seen Michael on the ground. I think they're going to kick it out of play for Michael. Actually, Michael stands back up. And Jack Day on it now. I think the Northern Explorers, they're just a bit too tired. Port of Spain Capitals, Bong City Ball, all left, right, and center around them. And they're trying to regroup here. Finally back on it. And Avid Affle White tried to play it forward, but to no one. And Mike on it now. He plays it now to Thomas. Thomas to Jack Dale. Jack Dale turns really well. He drives forward. This is looking very promising for Jack Dale. He plays it to Mike. It just doesn't. At the last moment there. Just didn't settle for him to have a strike, Micah. And it's quickly played. To the number seven. And is he going to clip it in the box? Good defending there by Ashwing. But the ball still goes back to the Port of Spain Capitals. And they have been relentless against this Northern Explorer side. Eventually they came out with it and now Ashwin has a lot of time and space and is he, he has some quick foot ability. A couple of step overs. But everyone ran back there for the Port of Spain Capitals defense. He didn't have any support there, Ashing. He was all on his own. And he had too much to do in the end. I must say this. Port of Spain capital side. I can't remember when Northern Explorers had any clean shot on goal or any clear chance. And I think that's a test to how good they are defensively. Noriga coming for it for the short pass. He really muscled his way into the side. Play it back now to Jack Deo. He has support on the right side for Joseph. Maki plays it back to Joseph, but he doesn't have the legs. He didn't want that. Back. And we're going to have two new changes. One for both sides each. Michael coming off for the number 19. Jadon Critchlow. And for 
the Northern Explorers, Kip Maloney coming on, the number seven. Oh, that's very dangerous now. That's not the first time we saw a very big passing mistake in the back from the Northern Explorers. They have had glitches in their system, the Northern Explorers. Two of which was the reason why they scored goals for the Spain Capitals. And now the number 19, Critchlow on it now. Critchlow, he tried to play to Micah. Oh, beautiful skill by Critchlow. That's flicked it over the opposite teammate's foot. We have another substitution here for the Northern Explorers. Number 19 coming on, Dylan Lara. He's actually a curiosity old boy, Dylan Lara. Has a bit of blue blood in him. And a long ball to Dylan Lara. Could he do something big? He has, a, he has some strength, I must say. Referee doesn't blow the fall and he... Immediately has an impact here, Dylan Lara. And he negotiated that one very well. The defender. 60 minutes into the second half and it's 3-0 to the Poise Win Capitals. This looks all too familiar for the Northern Explorers. Receiving four from the Maloney Mavericks. In this group C encounter. So I must say it looks as though the Northern Explorers need to go back to the drawing board. They need to recalibrate. If they want to see anything in this J.A. Super Cup tournament. It's a bit dangerous there. And they actually get it for this hard work. The number seven, Kip Maloney, the substitute. And he didn't play it. I think he should have swinged it in the box there. Now Jack Dale with a counter-attack. And he's drifting in and he plays it out to Micah. Micah being clipped in the back. But he still has it here, Micah. Now Norega to Joseph. Back to Norega. And Jack Dale, he has been really classy in the midfield here, Jack Dale. Hasn't got a goal, but has he, him and Norega has muscled the midfield single-handedly or double-handedly, I should say, two of them. Joseph would have a little bit wayward pass there, Joseph. He could have controlled it and played it better. Dylan Lara with a poor touch there. Expected a little better from him. But now they got. Plays it now to the. To the left back. And now he plays it now to. The number four. Anthony Stokes. A wonderful dummy of the play. And. Jack Dale look like he means business now. Drifting forward. Tries to play it inside, but to no avail and Kip Maloney. Good cut inside there and he's going to distribute it well. Yes, he does. And it's looking a little bit promising for the Northern Explorers. The counter-attack was on, but the side regrouped. But that ball was very disappointing and now the number 19. Jaden Critchlow has a counter attack going on for his side. Thomas on it now. In the center of the pitch. 
plays it to Young. Wonderful distribution to Critchlow. Wonderful pass that is. Some of the fans applauding it. So good. Critchlow now he's has a shot actually. I think he should have taken on his man. Number 16 coming on. Kadeem JK coming on for the Northern Explorers. For Apple White. Avid Apple White, that is. And Port of Spain Capitals. Micah coming off. And number 15 coming on. That is Ellis. Jafia Ellis, that is. Noriga. Richard Gale. Now to Joseph. To Critchlow. Now to Joseph. To Noriga. This has really, really been very easy for Port of Spain Capitals. They're really bouncing it around well. Now Joseph had a lot of time and space of swinging in the box. Nobody's even tackling him. And is it the one for Critchlow? He tries to play it back. But he gets a corner out of it, Critchlow. Looks as though they're looking to play it short here. They don't need to rush it. I don't give them wrong. And is he going to have a spank? He does. But wonderful defending and Ashwing eventually came out with it. And this is a beautiful ball. And we have Dylan Lara on the offense. And is he going to have a shot at goal? He plays it back to Kip Maloney. He did everything right there, Kip Maloney. Except one thing, and that is put the ball in the back of the net. That was a good save by Young Celine John, not to take away anything from the save. And now it's six, number 16 now. Is he going to swing it into Dylan Lara? He swings it in. But good defending again by Anthony Stokes. I think Kip Maloney should have done a little bit better there. He chopped on the inside. But his left foot was a little bit too weak. And that was easily gobbled up there by Young. Again, Celine Young, the goalkeeper. Target practice. And he plays it long to Ellis. Now to Ashen. Ashen is a skillful player. He runs in. And Ashen is he being pulled back. Ashen is it's going to be a whole oh, lock. Again, at last, this tackle by Kurt Maloney. Anthony Stokes with the last this tackle there. Saving his side, the clean sheet. This is a bit promising here from the Northern Explorers. But I think the corner kick needed to be better work there. I must say this is kind of smart by Celine John. Seeing his side. Been attacked. This is the, that was probably the best quality chance Skip Maloney got for the Northern Explorers in this entire game. Should have done better so that his side could have at least sniffed out something. And very dangerous there by the by the back Anthony Snooks. It's a brilliant long ball now, and he he's drifting on the inside. A couple of step overs, 
Cuts back and he plays it to Ellis. Ellis has a shot. And that was too high of a shot to pose any threat to the goalkeeper. Two substitutions now for the Port of Spain Capitals. Number 14 and number 8 coming on. Number 14. And number 8 coming on. Alex Pepper coming on. See if he could inject something into the side. But the other next for us, since the two substitutions, they have really been PAC in the front here. And A Link swings it in. And it was behind everyone. But Jack, they on it here now. So, Jack, Jack, they on now. Oh, beautiful cut back there. Now, Noriga and Jack, they really, really, really has been the two most outstanding players for me. For this for the Spain Capital side. Just a joy to watch. Joy to see them control the midfield. And even the players around them understand that they're the one to really control the tempo of the game and how fast everything moves around. Noriga on it now. And he clips it. That's a beautiful forward pass here. But well read. Now Ashing on it now. He has Dylan Lara on the opposite side. The number 16. Kadim Jackie. And we have a number 8 now coming on. Alex Pepper. Let's see what he can do. Kadeem Jackie should have controlled that a little bit better there, Kadeem. But he gets the throwing nevertheless. Plays it to Dylan Lara now. Lara played it a bit strong there. For his teammate. And Jack Dale. Was he fouled? No, the referee says play on. Is he going to have a crack? He cuts back inside. Well, his teammate took it from him and Pepper on the counter attack. Should he play it long or should he drift? Should he drive in? I think he should have drived in there. I think that was a better option. I think that would have been a little bit more dangerous. Good defending. Noriga on it now. Noriga to Pepper on the right flank. He asks for it. He gets it back now, Pepper. Mm. And now Jack Day on it. Is he going to swing it in? He's very skillful. I expect something special from him in this right side. Eventually, he plays it back to Norega. I can't remember. I can't even begin to count how much times I call Norega and Jack Deo. <laughs> They're so skillful. They get their bodies between the man and the ball so well, Norega and Jack Deo. It's a midfield masterclass between them both. 75 minutes in.
And let's see what Narega can do now. Actually, Jack Deo it is. And he plays it to Norega to Jack Deo. Oh, wow. That's a brilliant save. By Kyle Ferreira. But again, Norega and Jack Deo, they have a sort of a telepathic communication. And Thomas says he's going to get it back. He doesn't. And Dylan Lara on the, on the counter-attack. He cuts inside, but the pass just isn't good enough. And now Piper on it now. To Jack Deo, he gets it back. Piper, he cuts, in, cuts back, but brilliant defending. One thing I must mention, the physical strength of the Port of Spain Capitals is up much more higher than the Northern Explorers 50-50 battles most of the quote-unquote 50-50 battles are being won by the Port of Spain Capitals And Ashing on the on the press now. He plays it to Dylan Lara. Lara swings it in, and this is a beautiful cross in. Chest over the head. I think he could have jumped a little bit higher there. If his boots had a little bit more studs. Oh. It's really good skill there. By the number six, Apple White. Gets it back now. Look at the skill of this man. It's actually Josiah Thomas, the number six. Now Ashing on it now. He has oh, the distribution by Ashing wasn't well to the major frustration of his coach. And look at the speed of Ellis. Look at the punks. Is he gonna oh he cuts back inside? And now Piper, he's gonna have a next chance at a cherry and clipped. And I think Norega is going to watch the ball and say, can you give me a hat-trick? Can you, can you give this tournament the first hat-trick, Norega? We are 80 minutes into the second half, just about with 10 more minutes to play. Jack Deo and Norega having that telepathic communication again. And Norega, oh, Jack Deo with a really good left-footed shot. No way the keeper was saving that one if that was on target. And it looks as though there's sort of an injury again to one of the Northern Explorers players. I can't make out who it is. But the Port of Spain Capital, this has been a pure domination against the Northern Explorers. And he first about 40 minutes of this game, well not 40, about 30. It really was a chess match between the two teams. Couldn't really decide who had the upper hand. 
But two mistakes from the Northern Explorers just by not having that focus. Caused them to go two down in the first half. I must admit it wasn't much different in the two teams, but this second half, clearly there's a massive difference between the two teams. And it looks like it's the number six for the Northern Explorers, Elijah, who have a bit of a niggling injury. Like I said, Northern, the Northern Explorers really need to go back to the drawing board if they want to see anything from this tournament. They've been trashed by the Maloney Mavericks and now chromed 3-0 by the Port of Spain Capitals. What I must say though, that, that definitely leaves us Excited to see the game against the Maloney Mavericks and the Port of Spain Capitals. That's going to be a very tight one. Chuck Dale now, is he going to have a spark? Wonderful save by Celine and John. And Piper, he does a step over, but Ealing read the play, read the beat. And he's been awarded a foul too as well. I must mention the coach for the Northern Explorers, Joshua Lam, has been really frustrated with his players. Isn't getting what he wants from them. And now the ball is on the left flank, but it was just played a little bit long. And thus it goes out for uh, Northern Explorers. Goal kick. Now the Northern Explorers looks like they have time and space here now, but look at the speed. For the number five, and he has been given the foul as well. That pass there sums up how bad the Northern Explorers was today. Oh, everything just isn't ticking. It ticked a little bit in the first half, I must admit, but after the first two knockout blows the Northern Explorers have been seeing stars and they haven't really recovered from the three knockout blows that is the injection of a couple of substitutions gave them a couple of decent chances for Kip and Maloney but other than that nothing really to speak about And now Jack there on it now. He 
plays it now to Piper. Piper to Jack Deo. Cuts inside here, Jack Deo. Is he going to spank with the left foot? Cuts back again inside. Plays it to Noriga. Noriga with an easy. Oh! Through the legs. And is he going to crack? Plays it back to Noriga. Look at this. Piper on it now. With a little nutmeg, a little seasoning. A little bit of spice through the legs there. Noriga. And that's a strong challenge and beautiful challenge by the number 14. And Noriga swings it in. Ellis actually swings it in. But the keeper came out nicely and distributed well as well. And that's a fall in a decent position for the Northern Explorers. Let's see if they can at least get a consolation goal for their efforts today. They haven't scored in the tournament thus far. They have gotten close, but they haven't scored. The Northern Explorers. And let's see if they can at least nip one back here in the Marvin League. Wonderful flick back. And he eventually has a, a blast there. But that was nowhere close to the Port of Spain Capitals goal. Really wide, actually. Young really hasn't been tested in this game. Really hasn't been under a lot of stress. Like the old folks say, could have read the newspapers in the goal besides the Kip Maloney chance. But the Northern Express is black on it now, and we have players blowing forward. And he plays it, is he going to have a. Oh, the referee blows for a rash challenge. I mean, I think he got the ball, but the referee didn't like how, how hard the challenge was. On run they lost in there. And I'm getting intel that we are about two minutes extra time. Like I said, let's at least see a constellation going for the Northern Explorers. So that they could have some sort of respectability in this GA Super Cup tournament. Shot was very disappointing to say the least. Nothing really. Let's see. It's a decent effort. And Ellis, he has a lot of space. If he couldn't give it to Piper, but his head was done a bit much there, Ellis. That's brilliant there. Try to play it on the inside, but it's a no avail. Well, this is beautifully distributed to Jack Dale. And now to Thomas. All the way on the left flank. He tries to clip it in, but 
they read it really well there the northern explorers and they're on the counter attack and that's actually a beautiful ball for the number 16 let's see what he's gonna do is he gonna take on this lad yes he does and he clips it now with the left foot but it goes out for corner kick that's actually really good defending there by the right back number 16 had a little trick up his sleeve there could him and ailing now swinging it in and he swings it deep the keeper comes out and is this gonna be a chance again he swings it in but wonderful defending brick wall defending by the port of spain capitals and it goes straight to the keeper and he distributes it one time for jack day and is he gonna sprint forward cuts back and keeps the ball smartly here there's no need to rush it they all are three nil up noriga sort of flicks it up and <laughs> he's very skillful and now he plays it now to jack dale the noriga jack dale combination i've called their name so many times in this game now back to jack dale and he has actually ellis and he plays it to piper he cuts inside is he gonna play it on the right side Nothing came fruitful from that. Very promising, but no end product. And that pass there from the Northern Explorers really sums up their evening. The quality of the passes is just not there. Just kicking and hoping, to be honest. But Kadeem, is he going to spank it? He lets go the shot. What a save. Actually, it's offside. So if it went in the back of the net, it wouldn't have counted. But good shot and good save, nevertheless. At least we know Celine John, the keeper for the Port of Spain Capitals, that he can actually really save. <laughs> Jack Day now to number 14 on the, on the right back. Back to Jack Day. Really, really has muscle the midfield, Jack Day. Noriga now. And that's the blast of the final whistle for the second encounter between Northern Explorers and Port of Spain Capitals. 93 minutes, 3-0 to the Port of Spain Explorers. We have two from Johnny Norega and run from Anthony Applewhite, the number six. This is the GA Super Cup. If you do not know, I know today is Eid for Tehran. I must mention, must respects to all my Muslim brothers. Also to mention the tournament sponsors, Mario's, also um, Pizza, Mario's Pizza, um, also must also mention Ose, Ose Fashion and the Gateway Athletics. It's been a really action-packed night. The first game finished 4-2. And now the second game versus the Northern Explorers and the Port of Spain Capitals. We have more action for you next week. 6, 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Sunday and Monday. So if you think the football is anywhere near finished, no, it's not. So be in and around for the action. My name is Renner Medina and it's really been a pleasure commentating these two games for you. So, it's been an absolute pleasure for doing this tonight for you and I expect, you expect to hear my voice in a couple of games to come. This is the GA Super Cup and good night.
Hello and welcome. We are here at the conclusion of the second game of tonight's double header. We are here with the head coach of the Northern Explorers, Mr. Joshua Lamb. Um, just to touch on a, another defeat here, Joshua. I think that the floodgates are opening. What's going on? We need some, some feedback. What's going on? Yeah, I think that we have one of the younger teams in the competition. Um, tonight, basically, we beat ourselves. We played a good team, organized team, experienced guys. We beat ourselves, but that is football fair when you get your chances and you don't take them. That is how it is go. Uh, so with that being said, I mean, I know that it's a new franchise tournament and you know, you're getting used to new players. I know that that's what makes good coaches. Um, how's, how's been the GA Super Cup on, within your coaching resume moving forward in this tournament? Uh, well, the Gateway Super Cup has been fantastic. It's great exposure for some of the young guys who just coming out of school football. Um, I think that this is, is something amazing because it provides a platform for some of the kids to showcase themselves. And I believe that with every game, we get better, we play more organized, we play more disciplined. And, you know, it, it, it could only go up from bottom, from the bottom. But well, last but not least, um, are there any plans? I mean, this is a rebuilding process, you know, going two, two games down, back against the walls, you know. This is, I mean, as you say, from behind, it's sweeter. Let's, let us give a little insight. What are some of the plans? Are you... I mean, I, I know a lot of coaches are asking around for a channel, a chance a window yeah. to know what's going on. Are, are there any buys up the sleeves? Let me know. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. I think that um, with, the, with the window set to open, hopefully set to open, um, I'll definitely be in the market for some players. Um, I think that the core that we have so far is, is, is good. So we just had to build on them. And I believe that the group that we're in is a, is a very tough group. This, this, this team that we just played is, is full with great players. The Maloney team we played is, is great, uh, definitely a great team. So I think that if we, if we get some strength to our unit, we'll definitely be able to take them in the, in the second rounds. You know? All right, then well said. Thanks again, Joshua Lam. And that's, you, that's where you hear it from the Northern Explorers head coach, Joshua Lam. We're moving quickly along to Mr. Primus, the head coach of the Port of Spain Capitals, a very animated young coach. In, in, um, he's a, somebody has been around. I want to say good night and welcome to Mr. Primus. Hello, good night. All right, so, I mean, Primus has been here at attending every game thus far at the GA Super Cup scan. You know, he's, he's been scouting and doing everything, doing the hard work, and clearly he has come to pass this afternoon and he has dominated and come with a comprehensive 3-0 victory. How's the camp, Mr. Primus? The spirit in the camp are high, very high. We come out with a 3-0 win and we're looking forward to the next game. Moving forward, uh, moving forward as a team being led by Mr. Tiny, um, Mr. Joseph, I thought, he, I thought he had a very good game. He led from the front this afternoon. Are there any more um, tricks up the sleeve pulling in a few more players or are you contented with the bunch that you have? A couple more, so I guess... The league, the league will get more enjoyment. Enjoyment. So we are looking for more convincing performances from the Port of Spain Capitals. I mean, those, those are some big shoulders of, to, to carry this burden on. You're carrying the, the name of the capital city of Trinidad and Tobago on you. So I wish you all the best and I continue to, to look forward to seeing you here on the Winning Ways again. Okay. Thanks again. So it's been a, a very good um, performance by you today. I know you're of, not of Trinidad, Trinidad and descent. Give us an introduction. Where are you from? I'm from Venezuela, my name is Joy Noriega. So thank God for the game. And uh, glad we get the three points. I know we're in a hard group, but who can we'll get. All right, but I mean, you, you have a name of Noriega. Noriega is a, a, a Trinidadian name. You look the part, you play the part today, of course. So how has been gelling and coming from a different background to coming into an environment like this? This is uh, something new. This football, I know you played Pro League before, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. So, how is this compared to Pro League? Is it a nice opening? Is it something nice to be back on the field again? Yeah, I'm so happy because I come back now, you know. And they tell me to play in the Pro League, but I don't really want to get all the hard work because beside the football, I'm a work now. Mm -hmm. My personal work, so I don't want to leave it. So, the coachman tell me to go, come and get them my help. So, that's why I'm ending up here. Right, yeah. So I'm glad to have somebody of your stature here. So last but not least, before you go, looking on from a, a outsider's perspective, being a part of this Trinidad and set up for a while, how do you rate the GA Super Cup, the atmosphere, the vibes, the professionalism? How has been? 
Yeah, so far it went good. I like the public, plenty of people. Yeah, I like that. Plenty of man, real skill. They are real good for them because, you know, they call get a play all day. So I'm glad for them. So we like senior players, we have to keep pushing them, talk to them, carry them forward. All right, then again, thanks again and thanks for this welcome. So there you have it, the man of the match of tonight's second game at the GA Super Cup. We want to say it's been a crack of a game today. There's a lot of goals. We're going to continue to look forward to more. I'm going to ask you to continue viewing the GA Super Cup. Stay tuned.